I mean, games are a fantastic media to get people involved. That's why they're games. You know, they tell a story by involving you in that story, and it gives you a sort of a uh, personal investment. Say, for example, um, what is a ridiculous game? Uh, Oblivion. Oblivion. People have put hundreds of hours into Oblivion. Oblivion is, for those of you who don't know, is an Elder Scrolls story game released back in 2006 for the Xbox 360 as well as the PC, released by Bethesda Software. That game has a fantastic story, but what the but the driving force behind it is the amount of involvement in that game. How thoroughly invested you get into your character, you become your character. You know, do you want your character be to be evil, to be good, to be somewhere in between, or do you want him to be a war profiteer, you know, buying and selling weapons? Because you can do that. You can kill bandits, take their weapons, steal them, uh, steal their weapons, sell them off, make a huge profit. I know, I've done it. And just live your life as a, live that in-game life as a king. You can buy, like, houses in various different cities. You can't do that with movies or television. You know, and I feel that games are getting a bad rep for all the wrong reasons. I mean, to say that, oh, Call of Duty makes people shoot others, it's, it's stupid. It's a game. And for the, and I know someone's gonna say, like, oh, well... You know, they are really shooting people. How about this? Games don't teach people to kill others. Now here's a shocker. If you if you were honestly going to kill someone, you were going to kill someone regardless of whether or not a game told you to or, or not. You know, gamers don't become murderers. What you could say instead is that those who would be more murderers have a correlation with playing more violent games. You know, if you, like, um... Like, say, like, look at me, for example. I'm not a murderer, but I play games like, uh, Killing Floor. Haha, uh -huh. has killing in the name, clearly it's evil, right? Not really, I'm shooting zombies and mutants. I also play, uh, Planet Side 2. I play... What are what other like mass warfare games do I play? Shoot, uh, I could play Doom Three. That's pretty gory. Um, I play. What else do I play? Actually, uh, let me take a look at my Steam list here. I play Borderlands, mm, Deus Ex, but that's non-lethal. I play a lot of seemingly violent games, except I'm not trying to kill anyone. Like, my whole argument here is that if you are, mm, if you were go, if you were predispositioned, if you had that attitude to begin with, you would be drawn to games like that. It's not the other way around. It's not like you're taking a nice person, you're making him play a bunch of violent video games, and he comes out being this psychopath killer. No. It's, you take a psychopath killer, you lay a bunch of various games in front of him, and he's gonna gravitate towards the goriest, the most violent games. You know? But the media is taking that and it's twisting it all around and they're trying to get all these laws in there with like, you know, like, ah, oh, keep them away from the children! Like, well, sir, if your son was gonna kill anyone Regardless, like, it doesn't matter what game you buy him. You know, you could you could give him Minecraft, and he'd still build a bunch of, you know, a bunch of traps and dynamite things, and he'd still try and kill people in that game. You can. You can kill people in Minecraft, incidentally. But, but the, the whole point is, if someone was going to go commit a crime, they're gonna go and commit that crime, you know, and it's and if you're trying to predict who would commit what crime based on what game they're playing, well, good luck, cause you're not gonna succeed. It's like it's the same thing as trying to judge 
who's gonna be a psycho killer in an audience by co by seeing like who watches what movies. It doesn't work that way. If they were predisposition to be a murderer, they were going to kill someone. It doesn't matter if you if they only watched uh, Teletubbies or whatever. Actually, it'd be a little bit weirder if they watched nothing but Teletubbies. Yeah. But game, but my point is, games have a lot to teach us. They can show us new stories. They can give us imagination. Holy crap, what has happened to imagination in the world today? Like, seriously, no, no new, no new intellectual properties, no new, um, no new ideas or theories, like, it's all rehashed. I don't know. But anyway, yeah, that's, that's why I'm making gaming to reality. I mean, I'm trying to teach people that you can learn things from video games that you would not think it's obvious to learn. Like, hell, teamwork. The latest gaming to reality video I released this past Thursday. Teamwork, man. Do you know how rare that is? Now that I've graduated from university and I'm out in the real world, I'm looking around, I'm thinking like, shit, what happened to all the teamwork? It's like no one wants to work together with each other anymore now that they're, I don't know, paying their own taxes or something. It's, it's insane. But if you go into a game, you look at, like, meet, you meet up with random people whom you've never met before, and you automatically know there's a goal? You click together like clockwork. It's, it's amazing. It blows my mind how I can get along with people I've never even seen. I don't even know their names. And yet I get along with these people better than I do at my own job. Better than the people I work with at my own job. That's, if that's not a reason, you know, to pick up gaming, I don't, I don't know what is. The fact that you can work with completely random people, I, you know, you can work with them together against a set goal, and complete it with such a degree of uh, efficiency, blows my damn yes. mind. Uh, oh. I also wanted to talk about um, recent changes that are coming to my channel. I'm doing away with the Let's Plays, I'm keeping the new series I have on hand, but I'm planning to take my channel back to the history of YouTube gaming, which is Machinima. I am, that's right, I'm planning a Machinima project using the XCOM. So XCOM Enemy Unknown, if you guys remember, it was a series, was a Let's Play series on, I did. Yes. But I'm decided, Ready. I'm deciding yes. to take it in a completely different direction. Now, as you guys remember, I started out like a regular Let's Play, and to be honest, that's what I intended to do with it. But recent events in that game have decided to ha have have me deciding. That I could take this in a completely different way. If you look at it, if you look at it, my character, the currently Lieutenant Neil Vin, has recently lost his best friends and his entire team in the most recent mission. How can I not make a machinima movie out of that? I mean, that is total PTSD, you know, combined with like survivor skill. I could make a fantastic movie or series out of that you know to show a survivor in the middle of a war I would wh where are all the machinima guys jumping on this this is a fantastic plot idea I mean think about it you start him out he's this young happy-go-lucky like oh I'm here to slay aliens and chew bubblegum and I'm all out of bubble bubblegum I mean, he's a heavy for crying out loud. He does nothing but fire gigantic guns all day. And then, all of a sudden, on this one mission where he thinks everything's gonna go okay, he loses his entire team. His best friend dies in front of him. 
can you imagine what would ha what the psychological effects that would be on anyone? Oh man, I I would love to like where are the machinima guys out there to that make game movies like this? We need those guys back on YouTube. We need the innovation and the story writing and the hard work and the effort to come back into YouTube gaming because honestly I've been watching some, like, I've been picking Let's Play channels here and there randomly, and I'm watching, and I'm looking at my own Let's Plays, and I'm thinking, damn, this is crap. This is crap, it's just some guy talking to a microphone saying inane things, like now. But if you were, if I was to spend actual effort and make something of it, you know, make a make a movie, make a film, give it a plot. S that would bring out so much more enjoyment than, oh, hi, my name is Fervor, and I'm Let's Play Fervor. So, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry if it sounds like I'm ripping on Let's Players. I am not. You know, some of you guys put out fantastic content, and it's really funny. But, really, there needs to be more innovation in terms of YouTube gaming, and... I think that innovation involves taking things back to 2006, 2007 when YouTube first came out and one of the first gaming videos you watch is a machinima series with actual voice acting, with actual plot. Like Red vs. Blue, the Rooster Teeth guys. They've been going on 10 years now. You know their flagship series Red vs. Blue, it's on its like what, 11th season? Christ! See that? How many Let's Play videos last- how many Let's Players last 10 years and have such a strong following? I can't think of any. And I'm sure there are Let's Players from 2003, from 2004. But you don't see them around anymore, they don't have any fame or publicity, at least I haven't seen them. But you have a series like Red vs. Blue? Damn! was it a couple million subscribers on their YouTube channel as well as having their own website their own swag they started their own company the red vs blue guys also known as Ruther, Rooster Teeth were able to quit their day jobs and start up their own company I would love to do that we need more of that but anyway that's that's me for today uh, thanks for joining me for my rant talk discussion whatever it's just a lot of things happen this week, and yeah, cutscene, go. Brother, what took you so long? We were delayed. The new British governor, Warwick, he knows you, John. He sent his soldiers here asking for you, promising silver and horses if we would turn you over to him. We sent him away. The next day, this attack. Warwick doesn't need to look for me. I'll go to him. There were too many, General. We couldn't stop them. Native rabbles sending British regulars scrambling for the hills. I'm disappointed, Captain. There were mercenaries with the Iroquois. John Black's men. So, the fox has finally been flushed from his den. Clean yourself up, Captain. You have work to do. Take Black's uncle to our western fort. He will tell me where the Fountain of Youth is before he dies. Okay, this has been RTS Saturdays for the week. Sorry, it's only one mission, but... You know, I didn't, I didn't want to ramble on for an hour or so. I want you guys to just enjoy it. And watch some other stuff. Or enjoy your Saturdays! You know, um... I will try to have another RTS Saturdays out next week, but if not, oh well. You know, hope you guys have a nice weekend. Later!